Over the past few decades, gaming has moved from being a niche hobby to an entire culture. Gamers work as teams or alone against horrible monsters, and sometimes even against each other. Over time, we've become used to things like orcs, goblins, and even dragons. Creatures all born in myths and legends are now part of a new age of gaming legend, and no other game series I've found delves deeper into the old legends for new monsters and gods than Megami Tensei. So if you're curious about the history behind that demon you just gutted for XP, stick around and we can learn something about our fallen foes together. I'm your instructor Saigon, and welcome to St. Hermelin High. Alright everyone, class is in session. Today we're going to learn about one of the most recognizable monsters in modern fantasy you could ever face. The not so dreaded but always hoping to be Slime. These squishy blobs of goop are such a mainstay in RPGs that everyone here has probably taken down a few dozen of them across a variety of games. But where do they come from? How long have they been around? What were slimes doing before feeding us experience and currency points at the beginning of every game? In a shocking turn of events, slime monsters in fantasy and myth are somewhat recent phenomena. I don't mean recent in the history of everything ever sense of the word either. These guys are only relevant as monsters in a very modern sense. Well, the cave slimes in Minecraft are an excellent example, but we can go back further than that. Even further than the Mother series. I like where your head is at, but this is even before wizardry. Gary Gygax might have brought green slimes into fantasy gaming with Dungeons and Dragons, but let's think something a little more... Steve McQueen. No, that's... that's Steve McQueen. We need his co-star. There we go. Now, as far as my research shows, the 1958 classic The Blob is the first instance of our goopy groupies being used as a monstrous antagonist. In the film, an amorphous mass falls out of the sky and begins to devour everything in sight, growing in both size and threat. Tracing back through our history of slime-inspired savages, we can see how they evolved from 50s camp into the adorable little weak fellows that bestow us with our first levels. But that can't be it, can it? Everything has an inspiration, so what inspired puddings, gelatins, and oozes? Is anything in the real world that gross? Oh, oh god, the blobfish. I forgot about him. He certainly looks awful, but he's a fish, not really the ooze monster that found its way into the caves of early fantasy gaming. Aha! Now this is a great example. What we have here is a slime mold. This particular yellow species is known as Fuligo septica, also affectionately known as dog vomit mold. Slime molds are a type of organism that use spores to reproduce, similar to fungi, but they're actually amoebozoa. And honestly, what's more slimy than an amoeba? Think we're done? Not yet. Stop watching the clock, class. We'll be done soon. Our last real-world fiend is a cave slime in the truest sense. Look at that! How freaking cool is that? What we're looking at is the appropriately named Snotite, a mucus-type thingy that can be found hanging from ceilings and walls of certain caves. To make matters worse, it's actually alive. This isn't some cornstarch and water silly putty experiment. It's actually a colony of bacteria suspended in a slimy biofilm. And it still gets worse. This bacteria, you know what it eats and drinks? Sulfur and water. Know what it does with that? It excretes sulfuric acid. It's pee is caustic enough to burn you. So class, the next time you see a slime in your adventures, don't just kill it for the XP or the gold. Kill it because it is your responsibility to wipe out every last one of these gross acid-peeing monsters before they pee on someone. With acid. 